All right, not too loud, not too crazy. A little loud, maybe. No, still good? Okay. All right, recording. What are we talking about? Oh, that looks crooked. Maybe that's crooked. I don't know. Good morning, everybody. I'm Adam Bilsing, and this is the Oregon Drum Project, where we do daily deep dives into every aspect of playing the drums. Today is day 132, and our topic is learning from faster tempos. If you'd like to practice along with me, I'll be working out of a book called Stick Control today, running pages 16 through 21 at 72 beats per minute. I'm going to be working extra hard on number 16 off of page 16 because that's been causing me a lot of trouble. Let's see how it all looks. Okay, learning from faster tempos. That's what's happened to me today. I've been cranking up the tempo a little bit as I work through these flam exercises in stick control. And I'm at 72 beats per minute today, which is not fast, but it's a little faster than I've been doing it lately. And I discovered some pain in this one particular pattern. It's actually number 16 off of page 16, but it pops up um, all throughout these next four pages of the book. I'm gonna just kind of show you slowly what it looks like. So at slow tempos, I have it under my hands okay. It's not a huge problem, but there is a particular part of it when you speed it up and you sort of separate the hands. There are four notes happening in a row in each hand, and this isn't, this isn't any rudiment that I'm familiar with yet, so I don't know a way to cheat with some rudiments that I already know. I did separate the hands though, and each hand separate sounds a little bit like this. So I think I know where the problem is. I think it's because in that four note run, the third note is the flam, and the third note then has to have a higher stick height because uh, that's how you pull off the flam. So for the left hand, two low strokes, one high stroke and one low stroke are really causing me problems. My right hand can pretty well do it. My left hand, not so much. So. Instead of doing it at 72 beats per minute, I'm just going to show you this pattern and speed it up and slow it down. So you'll be able to see sort of where it breaks apart and uh, why it's causing me so many problems. But this is all something that I discovered because I started to push the tempo up, which is really the topic for today. What you can discover when you start practicing at a faster tempo. and. Uh, it's really been useful to me to go a little bit faster at a time and not jump big crazy gaps in tempo because I think if I went 20 clicks faster than this, I would have all kinds of problems and would have a hard time isolating one to work on. But when I've been not moving it up just like one notch at a time, this particular problem popped out from everything else and it's giving me one thing to work on for the next couple of days, which is kind of nice. So uh, I'm gonna change the camera angles up here a little bit and show you this exercise slow to fast. We'll see where I fall apart.
All right, that about does it for day 132 of the Oregon Drum Project. That's 132 days working towards my ultimate goal of ecstatic improvisation through technical mastery of the drum set, which just means I want to freak out real good. Special thanks as always to Mr. Silas himself over at Red 11 Media for producing these videos. Also shouts out today to Los Cabos Drumsticks. I'm using the 7A Red Hickory model and uh, Evan's Real Feel practice pad for always feeling real real. Also, AKG microphones now, which is pretty nice. If you'd like to follow along and make sure you don't miss any episodes of the Oregon Drum Project, go ahead and like and subscribe below. You can also follow me now on Twitter, Instagram, and mines all at dirty bandana also over on reddit at dirty bandana drums and you can get all the details for everything about the oregon drum project at dirtybandana.com. check out the merch store there's some cool stuff up for sale now that's it for today we'll see you all next time mm-hmm.